Hey y'all, it's Possum Breath, but you can call me PB for short. It's finally time for the second installment of my Clan Generator Challenge. If you're new to my channel and are wondering, well gee, if this is part two, where's part one? First of all, welcome. Second of all, there will be links to part one and the mini 1.5 update in the description down below if you want to watch those first. I'd recommend it because my Clan Generator videos are very lore heavy and you might feel a little lost with all these cat names flying at you. But you're also welcome to just skip ahead to the speed draws if you prefer. Cat design go burr, I totally get it. As an aside, you'll notice I'm a pig and not a cat. I decided it felt more right to use my persona for my little talking and explaining sprites, even though he's not a feline. The actual cat possum breath is a character who isn't meant to be me, and maybe you'll get to meet him eventually. Anyway, clan number two. You all voted and it was a fierce competition, but Bay Clan came out on top and I'm so excited to introduce you to them. I knew the second I saw Delightful and Stupid that this was a clan I needed to draw. Much like with Bush Clan, I decided to use this description to decide on some core traits for the clan, something that would bind every cat together as a cohesive unit. I decided to interpret Delightful and Stupid as taking joy in everything and being foolhardy and willing to take risks. It's not that they're not smart, it's that they have no common sense, which I thought was a much more fun interpretation. As I designed their characters, a theme of teaching and learning also emerged. These are cats who love to pass on their knowledge and learn new things. Whether that stuff is useful or safe is the real question. They are directly opposite Bush Clan on the territory map, and also directly opposite them in terms of goal. While Bush Clan is being cautious and defensive to keep itself alive, Bay Clan cats are the kind of cats that throw themselves into danger for fun. This is a warning, a lot of these cats have extensive scarring, and some have missing limbs or eyes. All of them are healed, happy, and healthy, but if that bothers you, then this may not be a video you want to watch. Bay Clan lives in one of the greener parts of the territory in a riparian area along a creek. Their name, Bay Clan, comes from the huge bay laurel tree that shelters their camp. They are the clan that is best at climbing, and they're known for being nimble and good at maneuvering in general. This is something they take great pride in. The back half of their territory is bordered by a thunderpath, and it's a common game, especially among apprentices, to run back and forth dodging monsters and seeing how many times they can cross in a row. Obviously, they don't always make it, but Bay Clan has a unique view of death in Star Clan. To them, death is just another part of life and not something they fear. When a cat dies, they consider it a joyful occasion and sing and celebrate that cat's life the way another clan might mourn it. They fundamentally do not understand the trouble that Bush Clan is having. Not because they don't care, but because to them it's just a natural part of the cycle of things. Sometimes cats die. More kits will always be born. What's the big deal? Bay Clan has an easier time keeping their numbers up than most clans, though. This is ranch country, and that means that across the Thunderpath there are several barns full of potential new blood. Several among their clan are former barn cats or kitty pets, and many of the younger cats have one parent outside of the clan. The other three clans look down on them for this, and there's a stereotype that Bay Clan cats are stupid because they don't have a pure warrior lineage and will just let anyone in. If anything, Bay Clan leans into this stereotype. They prefer to be underestimated because it means they tend not to be targeted when it comes to clan scuffles. Instead, Bay Clan is usually the clan that the other clans call on for help due to their lack of fear and willingness to throw themselves into trouble. I chose to unify their designs with the colors green and yellow in the same way I unified Bush Clan with blue and red. Green for their green and growing clan territory, and yellow for their sunny and energetic outlook. You won't see green cats. Instead, I used a gradient map layer to subtly shift the colors in that direction. All the dark blacks are actually very dark green, but the cats hopefully still look like they could exist in real life without hair dye. Now let's meet the clan. If you've been following my community posts, then you've already seen the leader, Rookstar, formerly Rooksong. She's been the leader of Bay Clan for as long as anyone can remember. She's aging visibly, her fur is scruffy and her hips are bony, and if you were to touch her back, you could feel every bone in her spine. Like all leaders, she started out with nine lives, and she's now down to two. She's died in a whole bunch of ways. She's been hit by a monster twice, kicked by a horse from the horse place once, bitten by three different venomous snakes, and mauled by the same mountain lion that ripped off Pepperstep's leg. She's made no secret that she's not precious about her lives. She's as old as she is not because she's careful, but because she's incredibly skilled. She knows her time will come one day, and she's determined that it will be a cool death. Greencough? Absolutely not. She's going to die single-handedly fighting an entire pack of coyotes, or she is simply not going to die. As a leader, she's considered the ideal example of a Bay Clan cat. 
Clever, unafraid, and able to find joy in everything from big things like the birth of new kits and the first spring polybogs, to little things like a particularly nice looking cloud or a pretty stone. She is almost permanently smiling and the entire clan adores her. Her deputy is a she-cat named Shadowcloud. As you can see from her clipped ear, Shadowcloud has been spayed. Formerly she was a stray who was adopted out to a household of two legs who named her Shadow. The two legs realized very quickly they couldn't keep up with her energy or her strong personality, and rather than returning her to the shelter, they just dumped her by one of the barns. She lived as a barn cat for a while, but always felt uncomfortable with two legs so close, no longer able to trust them. She always worried they would drive her out or take her back to the shelter and the cycle would repeat. She took great interest in the occasional Bay Clan visitors, and eventually followed them back across the Thunderpath where she quickly became beloved by the clan due to her endless optimism. She impressed them by not only throwing herself into learning warrior skills with enthusiasm, but also by improving at a surprising rate. To hear her clanmates tell it, if it weren't for her ear, you'd never know she used to be a kitty pet. She was an obvious choice for deputy, she's great at putting every cat where their strengths are best used, and she knows what they like to do and what they don't. No one is unhappy when she's assigning duties. She always has a compliment ready for every cat, and even when a mistake is made, she knows how to turn it into a learning opportunity rather than a cause for shame. Essentially, she is the kitty version of a loving soccer mom, and will cheer her clan on through anything. She's described only as a black cat, but I gave her some dark markings around her eyes and cloud-like markings along her sides to add visual interest. She is, I think, the most huggable cat I've drawn. The medicine cat, Night Pelt, is Rookstar's son, and seeing how obviously old he is should give you a very good idea of how old Rookstar is. He was named for the moon-like marking across his shoulders that makes his pelt look like a dark night sky. His connection with StarClan is particularly strong, and sometimes he claims that if he closes his good eye and only looks out of his blind one, he can see the spirits of Bay Clan's warrior ancestors playing or napping in the tree branches above them. Whether that's true or not, only Nightpelt knows, but his clan believes him without question. He's great with herbs, he has to be in order to keep a clan like Bay Clan healthy, and is always trying out new remedies, often on himself. It's not unusual for him to bite himself to see what happens when he puts a particular mushed up leaf on the wound. You'll meet his apprentice later, but rest assured she goes along with these experiments with bright-eyed enthusiasm. Something is always happening in the medicine den, and this is one of the rare clans where cats love to spend time in there, just to watch all the goings on, or take part as a willing experimental subject. If they're already in there with a wound, they might as well contribute to clan knowledge, right? The oldest of the warriors that Nightpelt has to look after is Leechnose. In a clan where tempting danger is the name of the game, being the senior warrior is a particular mark of pride, and Leechnose definitely is proud. In particular, she loves mentoring apprentices and teaching them all the tips and tricks she knows. The best way to approach climbing a tree, how to catch frogs, the best way to use light and sound to judge how far away a monster is and how fast it's approaching. She takes joy in seeing another cat learn and improve. She mentored Shadowcloud when Shadowcloud first joined the clan, and nothing makes her happier than to see her former apprentice now settling so well into the role of deputy. Now she's mentoring the apprentice Hornetpaw, and she's already scoping out the kits currently in the nursery to see who she might like to mentor once Hornetpaw gets his warrior name. Some she-cats are permanent queens. Leech Nose is a permanent mentor. I made sure to communicate her pride in how she stands and holds herself, tail straight up, ears forward, strong and centered. Of particular note is her lack of scars. At her age, she absolutely should have some, but she doesn't, and to her that's a sign of her own skill. The next warrior is Swanstone. She throws herself into everything with 100% enthusiasm and chronically bites off more than she can chew, but she never complains. If she's not being challenged, then she's not having fun. She's gunning hard for Deputy once Shadowcloud becomes Shadowstar, and is always looking for ways to prove her skill and passion. She's the first to take extra patrols, the first to volunteer for hard jobs, and she takes great pride in doing hard work and doing it well. She's not all business, though. She's a little prankster, and is always the first to suggest doing something dumb because it'll be fun. Despite no longer being an apprentice, she loves dodging monsters and holds the clan record for the most crosses in a row. She's my personal favorite out of this batch, and in the plotline I have cooking up for these clans, she plays a prominent role along with Smokeheart. In fact, because of her, I've decided that in addition to a cohesive theme, each clan will also have a protagonist, a main cat who will be deeply involved in the story's conflict. Swanstone will be the first to suggest an actual solution to Bush Clan's problem, though what that solution is I'm going to wait until a future video to tell you. Mallow Nose, if you couldn't guess, is Leech Nose's daughter. She was mentored by Swanstone and gained her warrior name just a moon or so ago, so she's still young and learning. 
Beyond being in honor of her mother, her name is also fitting in that she likes to stick her nose into everything. She's in everyone's business all the time. If other cats are talking, Malinos has to insert herself into the conversation to see what it's about. She cannot keep a secret to save her life and often speaks before she thinks. But her heart is in the right place. Like her mother, she has no scars, but unlike her mother, she's excitedly brainstorming what kind of scars she'll eventually get and how cool they'll make her look. Every time she gets the smallest bite or scratch, she asks Night Pelt if it will scar, and she's always disappointed when he says no. She's sure that her luck will change the next time the clans start fighting, though, because Bay Clan always gets called in to help, and now she's old enough to join the battle. Hornetpaw is Leech Nose's current apprentice. Much like his namesake, he's always buzzing with energy. He talks at a million miles an hour and has questions about everything, something which Leech Nose loves because it shows how eager he is to learn. He's only a moon or so away from gaining his warrior name, and was very close with Malinose when they were apprentices together, something Leech Nose has noticed, and you can bet she's subtly trying to set the two of them up as mates. Hornetpaw isn't thinking about starting a family yet, though. He wants to learn not just Bay Clan territory, but the entire territory, and often sneaks off to try to get peeks at other camps. It isn't for recon or potential battle strategies, he's just incredibly curious about how other clans live. If he were a human, he'd be studying sociology in college. He's definitely been escorted back to Bay Clan camp multiple times by the annoyed patrols of other clans who've caught him trespassing, but in true Bay Clan fashion, the usual response is, I bet you can't get further next time. Hornet Paw, you can see, I redrew. You also probably got jump scared a couple of times by the next two cats, his sister Mustard Paw and mother Honey Whisker. I drew the first version of him, drew the two of them, and then took a break, and by the time I came back, I decided he needed a second pass. I'm glad I did, because I think the second version of him is much better. You can also see I changed the type of tabby he is to better match his sister. His sister, Mustard Paw, is the medicine cat apprentice, and a cat who will try anything once. This makes her a great apprentice for Night Pelt, and the two of them are always cooking up something new. To put it simply, medicine is her special interest. Anytime she encounters a plant that she isn't familiar with, her first instinct is to become familiar with it, whether that's a good idea or not. She's eaten a lot of things she shouldn't, but Night Pelt believes in learning by experience, and also he knows he couldn't stop Mustard Paw even if he wanted to. She is a genius at setting broken bones, and prefers to use the thicker, stronger horsehair she can get from the horse place instead of cobwebs or vines. She regularly makes trips over there to refresh her stock, and all the barn cats are very fond of her. I gave her one of my favorite visual design quirks, both eyes completely covered by hair. If I were left to my own devices, I'd make pretty much every cat look like this, but instead I reserved it for Mustard Paw because she's my other favorite from this clan. I also changed her name from the much more boring Yellow Paw. You can see I went back later and changed the pose of her far front leg and also added some plants to her pelt. I don't know why I didn't have them in there originally, but I think it spices up her design a lot. Honey Whisker is one of the queens. She's got a loner boyfriend named Rascal, who fathered Hornet Paw and Mustard Paw, and is also responsible for her currently percolating litter. She is Swanstone's older half-sister, and the two are very close. Honey Whisker is one of the few cats that can get Swanstone to really just relax and slow down. In fact, she has that effect on most of the cats around her. It's not that she has any more common sense than the rest of them, if anything, she's kind of an airhead. It's that she's just so unwaveringly kind that it's hard not to find yourself in a good mood around her. She believes the best of every cat, even sometimes to a fault. She'd be very easy to manipulate and take advantage of, but if any cat were to try it, the entirety of Bay Clan would immediately claw them to shreds. While this is her second litter, she's got no interest in being a permanent queen. She likes exploring too much, something you can tell she passed down to Hornet Paw. Her favorite thing to do is go on patrol and she knows the Bay Clan territory perhaps better than anybody except for Rookstar and the Elders. She's also always the first to notice if something is different. She often can't explain what the difference is, but the clan has learned by now that her gut instinct is usually right. If Honey Whisker says something looks weird or she has a bad feeling, the rest of the clan knows they need to investigate ASAP. Poppyfoot is the other queen, though she's already had her kits. The generator doesn't generate kits, but this is my challenge and I wanted to draw cute little bean kittens, so I drew her and then also I drew her three babies. Poppyfoot is a fairly young she-cat, and this is her first litter. She had a fling with a barn cat named Benji, but then he started getting clingy and she's avoided seeing him since. She's very much a free spirit who doesn't handle the stress of serious decision making or responsibility well. She'll do whatever her clanmates ask of her with a smile, 
but she freezes the second she's put in charge of anything. This has made adjusting to motherhood a little difficult for her. She loves her kits, but isn't totally confident or firm enough to parent them. So Honey Whisker as a more experienced queen has been stepping up to help her get the hang of it. Her kits are named from left to right, Cotton Kit, Clay Kit, and Current Kit. She is absolutely that mom that thinks matching names are the cutest thing, so they all get names starting with C. While still young, the three of them are already displaying clear personality. Clay Kit is rambunctious and a little full of himself, Cotton Kit is his second-in-command and mischief assistant, and Current Kit is a little more reserved but tends to go along with whatever the other two are doing. Mudstream is one of the clan's two elders, and she is at this point more Scar than Cat. She's the only cat who remembers when Rookstar was still Rooksong. She should be retired and resting in the Elder's Den after what is truly an impressively long time as a warrior, but she physically cannot be contained to camp. She might look like an old lady, but she has the energy and troublemaking ability of a kitten. It's not unusual for her to just sort of sneak off to do crime. It's a running joke that one day she just won't come back, and that's how they'll know she's finally kicked it. She thinks this joke is absolutely hilarious, and every time she comes back to camp, she'll loudly announce that they aren't rid of her yet. The kits and apprentices all love her. She's everyone's honorary grandma, despite not being related to any of the cats in the clan by blood. Her description calls for short hair, but I made the executive decision to give her a big scraggly neck fluff to really make her look wild and scrunky. She used to have a much longer tail, but over the years and through a series of fights, she's lost more and more of it until it's now just a little nubbin. The clan's other spicy grandma is Fennelblaze. A long time ago, she was a barn cat named Licorice, but she caught glimpses of the Bay Clan way of life when Bay Clan cats would visit, and she decided it looked much more exciting. She crossed the Thunderpath on her own while pregnant, and immediately earned the respect of the Bay Clan cats by doing so. Soon after that, she had Honey Kit, now Honey Whisker, and then a year or so later, she had Swan Kit, now Swanstone, who was fathered by a different Tom. If you go back, you can see that both Swanstone and Honey Whisker have the same fluffy bits by their cheeks as Fennelblaze does. She is another cat who was badly injured by the cougar. You can see she lost her front right leg. Once she was well enough to leave the medicine den, she threw herself wholeheartedly into relearning how to climb, and now is one of the cats that gives apprentices pointers on how to get up trees like a pro. If she can do it with only three sets of claws, then they can do it with four. And that's the entirety of Bay Clan, and the second of my four randomly generated clans complete. The second place winner on the poll was Sage Clan, which has the most cats, so either that video is going to be very long, or more likely, I'll split it up as a two-parter. In either case, if you had fun here, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe so you can see when the next clan comes out. Thanks for watching and see you all next time.